We live in a nano world. Nanoparticles are used to make our world faster, stronger, more efficient, cleaner, shinier, cheaper. But little is known about the long-term impacts these particles are having on our health or the environment. And to test every one would take decades and cost billions. Nano Solutions is a research project funded by the European Union that aims to change all that. The project is developing a tool that can predict the hazard potential of engineered nanomaterials, so speeding up the innovation process, making it cheaper, and ultimately keeping us all safer. The project is coordinated in Helsinki by Professor Kai Savalainen of the Finnish Institute of Occupational Health. Nanotechnology has been identified as uh, as one of the key enabling technologies. If we think of nanotechnology applications, so they stem from um, range from uh, say cosmetics used by consumers. They they can be utilized in in car making, in 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 aeronautics, in producing airplanes and cars. But they also provide solutions, uh, for example, for to produce renewable energy, uh, catching or carbon uh, dioxide from the atmosphere, and in 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 many ways they can also provide solutions uh, uh, for one of the grand challenges of our time, notably uh, the climate change. Nanotechnologies hold uh, a great promise. However, we have to be careful of. Um, letting the innovation to uh, fly high, uh, but in a safe way. There is, there is no innovation without safety. And the nanotechnologies are uh, no exception in these terms. It might be that some characteristic that makes make them so useful may also be uh, harmful to the health. Previously, the, the material, for example, asbestos, is extremely good material for constructions. The problem was that we um, identified later that it is causing the problems for the human health. And I'm not saying at all that the nanomaterials are bad, but I would say that it is highly probable that some materials, there is a concern. There, there are a lot of these new nanomaterials around and the number is very high and that means that they are new they are new materials and uh, although the chemical nature is the same as as larger sized material the their characteristics may be completely different that means that their possible Ill health effects have to be uh, studied separately because we cannot predict from the information that we have from the uh, bulk size material how these nano sized materials would behave and uh, this is an enormous task. The big challenge is that we don't know which of the thousands or hundreds or, or engineer nanomaterials are those which uh, cause concern or, or are, are the cause of concern. So the challenge is to identify, say, harm, uh, harmful ones from harmless uh, engineer nanomaterials. And, and this is what the Nano Solutions Project is all about. For existing chemicals, there's a, a safety testing system that we use for uh, all sorts of substances and, and medicines. And that safety system uh, runs on the idea of each new chemical requiring testing. And the problem with nanomaterials is we can make them in so many different shapes and sizes and surface chemistries that that would theoretically generate a vast number of new chemicals and, and basically overwhelm our existing testing system. So we need to come up with a smarter, better way of, of testing nanomaterials, but also keep them safe. Without this we are, we are living in a blind world and, and this is not possible. So what is the project doing about this problem? And how will this help identify which nanomaterials will be harmful to human health? Nano Solutions is actually going to solve this problem by using a kind of classifier which would use data generated during the project and also data gathered from other projects and uh, also after the project 
And on the basis of these data, and on, on the basis of data that are gathered from the complex uh, alterations that occur in cells, uh, we hope to come out with with a pattern that can be used for identifying hazardous nanomaterials. The, the project is going to achieve that by um, testing a range of different organisms uh, with a, a group of nanomaterials that have had very specific chemical modifications that represent a range of types of chemistries. And by measuring all those chemistries and measuring all the biological responses of the organisms, with some new techniques involving uh, systems biology, we're able to, to generate a computer model that will give us a predictive tool on, on hazard. My group in NanoSolutions is particularly involved in the development of the, of the algorithms that uh, will uh, form the skeleton of the classifier. In order to do this, we have to uh, get in input a uh, large volume of data. Th this is big data because uh, we have, uh, you know, in the human genome we have uh, about 30,000 genes and they, they uh, code for, you know, 100,000 proteins. So uh, the idea is to extract from this uh, data the most essential uh, features, the most essential elements that are able to predict the behavior of the nanomaterials. Uh, the grand goal is of course to create a, uh, a system in which you, you will not need in the future to run any more very thorough experimentation, very uh, time consuming and, and, uh, and uh, expensive experimentation, but you will be able to focus on a limited number of relevant uh, molecules in order to predict what a new nanomaterial could do uh, to the cells. It could be used by the regulators, industry and other relevant parties to uh, identify hazard, uh, well identify hazardous engineering nanomaterials uh, from uh, non-hazardous materials and also classify them according to the hazard potential. And when you combine this information would exposure data from workplaces, uh, consumer exposure situations, and the environment, so you can also, uh, in the future, utilize this approach in risk assessment or different types of engineering nanomaterials. That will allow us to do things like improve product labeling. Uh, it will allow us to give more precise information, for example, on um, hazards to nanomedicine side effects, for example. Uh, and for agrochemicals in the environment more precise information about their application and when to use them and when not to use them. Um, so, so we're hoping that it's going to be informative for the public uh, on, on the new nano products that they, they receive in due course. Imagine a system in which you were able to develop new materials in a much faster way. You would be able to uh, create innovation in, in a much more uh, cost-effective way and you would be able to, um, in the future, design new materials that are safe by design. Because, in fact, you can predict, um, you could predict in the future the behavior of the materials without doing any experiments at all. So, there is a great potential there. The world will be full of nanomaterials, nanotechnologies, so that you don't even realize that you are you are living in the nano world. The Nano Solutions project is is trying to do something that we we haven't done before. It's about supporting a responsible uh, use of engineering nanomaterials and nanotechnologies through protecting uh, humans and the environment. This, has, this will have a big impact because such a tool is extremely needed but it's currently missing.